Hi there! Last time you saw me work on the lower part of the mast. This time I will work on the inside of the lower part of the mast, but also a bit on the upper part of the mast. I need to do this in order to make sure that I can fit the two parts together later on. On the upper part I unscrew one of the stations and fit the station from the lower part of the mast. This is to get a smooth transformation from the wide base to the more slim top mast. I cover the top part with strips in a similar way to the lower part. Fit small strips together to make up the very front of the mast. For this step I use wood glue as a temporary binder. It is cheap and safe to use with just gloves. You could probably use hot glue instead if you prefer that. I shape the front part flat to fit the cover strip later on before moving back into the garage where I continue to add strips to the sides to make up the oval shape bonding with wood glue drops a few centimeters apart Clamps and tape hold the strips while curing The real bonding is done with epoxy Thickened epoxy mixed with cotton fibers are stronger than wood so it's not necessary to improve the strength using a bird mouth technique. Thus this should be a simpler building technique. Now I am ready to add the cover strip. As most of it will be sanded off, it does not need to be pretty. What is important is that it's centered and tight. To help the epoxy entering the gaps, I turn the mast. With gravity, it is easier to get the epoxy in between the side strips. Same for the other side. Striking over the gaps at the 45 degrees angle also helps. And finally, to keep the epoxy in the gaps, I turn the mast right. The day after, I can remove the glued front and prepare for gluing the back end. I mark where the front ends to help with placing the lower strip and dry fit the strip. I will proceed with this when I have more epoxy work to do. Instead I start working on the inside of the lower part. I will need to strengthen the bottom part. So I start fitting some smaller pieces of wood inside the mast. A thin strip to fit inside the front. I just need to face the size to better fit. Now it looks better. Here in the very bottom of the mast I will make the mast solid. A 17 cm long piece is what is needed to house the mast stepping devices. Further up I need a longer solid piece for cleats and boom fittings. In the front I put an even longer piece to balance the solid back. When all pieces are cut and dry fitted I mix up the epoxy. First a thin strip on the inside bend of the front. I am generous with thickened epoxy to get a solid core. Then the thickest strip on the second layer. I use the inside of the mast as a cradle for this messy work. All sides are covered. And also the inside I cover with a thick layer of thickened epoxy. Before I lower the piece in place. Same with the next layer. 
I do not want any gaps, so I put some pressure on the bundle. As I still have some epoxy left over, I might as well proceed. Covering the inside. And gluing the side strips of the upper end of the mast. At the farther end you can notice the facing of the top mast. This is to make a smooth transition to the lower, thicker mast. I clamp the strips in place. And as I still have some epoxy work to do, I proceed with gluing the upper end of the lower mast. I have faced a thicker piece to make a receiving hole for a pin. A part of the upper mast will slide into this hole all the way down to a stop, which I am gluing now. This will keep the upper mast in place. Also here I put some pressure on the bundle, before I let it cure overnight. To strengthen the mast foot I prepare to cut a piece of a steel pipe. The pipe will strengthen the side of the mast foot keeping the mast on the pin on the crossbeam. I cut a short piece for this. The pipe will receive the pin as I swing the mast in place. I will need an opening to allow the pin in. Although not the perfect tool for bending steel, I manage. Hammering the pipe into an U shape. The front of the pipe should be 3.5 cm in from the front end of the mast. And the pipe's length up into the mast. I cut an opening into the mast to fit the pipe. I need to change to a shorter blade for cutting the inside. Before I can chisel out the piece. Still some trimming. Before it fits. Same with the next layer. I make a hole into the piece. And fit the next layer. The pin will swing in through the back end of the mast. Thus I need to mark a hole through the back end. And cut out some material. As it's thicker than the blade I need to do it in two goes. Before I can cut through. and trim a bit. Now I'm ready for the next round with epoxy in this end. In the upper end of the lower mast I need a strong surface. Thus I cut glass to cover the inside before I start smearing epoxy. When covering all sides, I will get some epoxy on the hands. Thus, I use an extra set of gloves that I dispose in a few minutes. As the barrier time of vinyl gloves is just a few minutes. The flange is clamped to the stopper bundle. It should make a tight fit to the front part of the mast. 
As it will be easier to take out the pin if the inside is faced, I add more material further down into the mast. The front end is already faced, so here I just need to add one layer. But the sides need more material to make up a facing. The pieces I cut earlier in the bottom end are now glued in place. After putting the bottom in place and the cleat pieces, I will be ready for joining the two halves. That will be in a coming episode, as this is already too long. I hope to see you then. Thank you for watching, and please give this episode a like 